um, if you could see either Irene, you may have Irene, and Jeannie, or Debbie over here on the way out, um, they, they will uh, get you connected to our church. We have these little white cards and views about connection cards, just give it to one of the three ladies, and we'll have you connected to our parish. Um, thank you for coming out this morning for liturgy. I wasn't sure when I woke up today whether we would be having church or not. That's uh, kind of crazy. We live in Florida. I, I lived for many years in New England, and we never missed church for any reason, weather related. And then you have the church, and we've got hurricanes, and now in mass rains. Um, I've actually missed my, my first month here, missed two liturgies, my very first month here for weather. Back in 2004, for those who were here, we had two hurricanes come through my very first Sunday and my fourth Sunday, and uh, we almost lost another Sunday to the rain. I wish we could ship this to California. Uh, my mother and brother would be really happy if this happened in their uh, home state right now. Anyway, thank you for coming, and, and I hope that we're all safe uh, our return home. A couple of things this week. Uh, we have many services now with the 50 days of August starting. We will have the service of the Paraclesis, We'll have that Monday, Wednesday, and Friday evenings at 6 o'clock, all three evenings. <clears throat> if you uh, wish to have members of your family pray for the regular service, there should, be, uh, there should be forms in the back of the church, and I don't know why the messenger didn't get to you. We got it in plenty of time, but that should be coming in. That should be coming through the next couple of days. So bring that to church. You can mail it in, of course, to the church office, but even better is to bring it to church so we can pray for your families with you in attendance. Um, this Thursday is also the Feast of the Transfiguration of our Lord, and that we will have liturgy Thursday morning at 10 o'clock for the Feast of Transfiguration. Um, again, three Baracus services and one liturgy this week. <clears throat> I want to thank our choir for singing so beautifully this morning, especially a lot of our young kids there. But we're, we actually have the, the, we're calling it the small choir now, and that is going to sing occasionally. Um, and they, they sang very beautifully this morning. I thank them and thank Charlie for being them so, so beautifully this morning. And also the last announcement is that we're having a ministry, Council of Ministries meeting next Sunday to put the calendar together for the upcoming year after church next Sunday. Please make sure one of the members of your ministry is there. I'll send an email to the office to send an email this week since I know many of, many of our people are not here. But we'll be putting the calendar together for the coming year. Um, when you leave this morning, if you use one of the green books in the artifacts, that's what the choir was saying to you. If you just please leave them up, um, either on one of the chairs or over there. Um, I don't want, I don't need to stay in the pews. We have lots of things in the pews, so we'll just get those out as we need them. Um, just please return them up here. Um, this morning, we do this every year, and I'm sorry that it fell on the name of the weather's poor and, and the attendance is not what we normally have, but um, we, we have one Sunday a year that we ask the young people who went to St. Stephen's summer camp to come and, and offer us a few words about their experience at camp. Um, today is a special Sunday. Uh, for two reasons, and that's why I picked this Sunday of all of any Sunday I can pick. Um, today is one of the two feasts of St. Stephen, the other one being December 27th. Today is the translation of his relics. St. Stephen was the first martyr of the church. He was one of seven deacons and has the title Archdeacon, and that you can read about that in the book of Acts, chapter 2. But St. Stephen is the patron saint of our camp, and so that made sense for this Sunday. And also the Bible reading this morning, talking about the Lord retreating the mountains to pray and to recharge even his batteries, even the Son of God needed to recharge in order to do his important work. And if the Son of God needed to do this and set an example for us, then it's something that we ought to be doing as well. And so the St. Stephen's camp is an opportunity for us to retreat literally to the mountains and go away from everything, go away from technology, go away from our families, go away from busyness of the world and also its negativity and go someplace and recharge our batteries, grow closer to the Lord and have a lot of fun in the process. We had 25 people between campers and counselors go to our camp this summer, which is a record from our parish. Um, I'm very proud of our young people. They represent our parish very well. Um, you see that our, our kids are very much into the camp culture. They step forward as leaders. They welcome newer members of the camp, and it's really a joy to, to be there and to call myself their priest and say, these are, these are my camp kids. Um, so I'd like to have all of our camp kids, if they want to come up here, most of them are over here. Um, can I just want to come over here, and um, Billy should be a minute or two of reflection on their time at the camp, and so that they enjoy it, and so that they learn. So please give them more attention.
again, this is all of the kids that work here. We had 25 plus staff people.
St. Stephen's is a truly clean, special place. It's a place where you can disconnect from the world and world stress. It's a place where you can meet new people from all across the country, and most importantly, a place where you can strengthen the faith of God. I learned many lessons and made many friends that from St. Stephen's that I'll carry with me throughout my life, and those are the reasons why I've inspired all the best in my summer.
the schedule was so full that we got to have the time we were at church and have the time we were doing amazing activities that just brought us all closer together. And I really do not want to leave at the end, but I know that there's always next year, and after that, you can always be a counselor. And I definitely recommend that you go to the state seniors because I will go back as many times as I can.
and we have our technology, and we have our schools, and, we, and we're surrounded by people who don't think like us. We're surrounded by people who don't share the values that we share. So this is an artificial environment, I know that. But it gives our young people and our old people an opportunity to, to touch the church the way God intended for it to be. For us to be able to go and talk about the things that we have a hard time talking about. To go and make the spiritual growth that we all need to have. And it happens because we have that safe environment. And because everybody checks their cool car at the door. Because we do all kinds of activities that involve trusting and leaning on other cabin mates and other teammates. You know, and, and, and this kind of thing is accessible to our church, to the adults too. I wish we could go to an adult camp up there. All right, we have this Diabetes Center, and that's for everybody. And we should go in small groups, whether it's a local retreat or a young adult retreat or maybe a Bible study retreat or even a parish retreat sometime up there. But even if we can't reach the Diabetes Center, we need to be making this kind of environment here in our own parish, a place where people feel safe to speak their minds we're going to feel safe that they're going to be heard and not judged. I mean, we should have this, this is the kind of church environment we should have all year long. And it shouldn't just be limited to summer camp for one or two weeks a year for our young people or the people who are the counselors there. That's the thing that we need to have in mind most of all. We, we schedule in the day, we schedule every day for a 15 minute period where everything shuts down and everyone prays. We call it alone with God. All activities cease. I mean, there was no phones up there anyway to begin with, but there's no, there's no stimulation during that time. All it is is you and God and nature. And to hear just the sounds of nature and see a hundred teenagers sitting quietly and praying, that's a moving thing. And one night when the senior captains we were laying out on the dock underneath the stars, and people said, you know, I don't think I've ever looked up at the stars, because you can't see them in Tampa or Charlotte or anywhere else where there are bright lights. And number two, we don't even think about looking up. We're so interested in looking down at our devices. We don't think about looking up. And when you lay down and pray under the blanket of the heavens and think like God put all those stars up there, it's a lot easier to understand and believe that there is a God who has put every star in its place. And if God put every star in its place, he's, he's certainly put every human being and his or her talents in their place. So this is what is so beautiful and miraculous about King. Now, when I went to camp, again, for two weeks this year, and I thank our parish for supporting me in going to this. Um, I went for confession because I had the opportunity to go there. There were many priests. I don't, I don't see many priests very often. I don't see many priests most weeks. But there I saw many priests, and I got to hear lessons from many priests, and our, and our kids got to hear lessons from other priests, not me, to see that it's the same message in a little different package. And I got to go to confession, I got to renew myself. I got to throw a lot of water balloons, throw 4,000 of them in the two weeks that I was there. I even got the Metropolitan to break water balloons. He threw it at me and he said, Father, that felt good. I want to do that again. I never, he said, I've never done that before. I'm 70 years old, I like doing that. So it's a place where even the old people go and feel free to have a good time. And sort of let loose of the, of the things, the roles we all are playing in our life. Sometimes the masks that we're all wearing in our life. I want to share one last thing, which is something that I did alone at the end of camp. I, every year before I leave camp, I go down to the, the outdoor chapel and I pray in front of the altar. And there, I don't know what the next year of my life holds. I don't know if I'll be back at the camp next year or not. I don't know if I'll be alive next year or not. But I always go there and I thank God for the, for the time that I've spent there. And I ask God to just protect my life protect my family while I'm away from that place. And as I knelt down at the altar, I started crying and I started crying for a long time. And I'm not really a person who cries very often. And I'm not really sure why I was crying. It was kind of a combination of this is a really beautiful thing that I was privileged to be a part of. And I was thanking God for this beautiful privilege. And I was crying because I hadn't really had an emotional release the entire time that I was there. Because as the kids said, the days just kind of go boom, 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 and there really isn't a whole lot of time to sit and process things. But I mean, I sat down with a lot of beautiful kids, whether it was in class, whether it was on the ropes course, whether it was in confession, and I had a lot of laughs with them, and I heard a lot of their stories. 
and I heard a lot about those, those safe, those things that they felt safe to talk about. And I heard from some kids and some counselors who are doing really well with their faith. I mean, people who said, you know, Father, I'm a counselor and I'm in college and I'm and everybody around me has like messed with their purity and I'm still I'm still going good. Can you, can you Father pray for me that I'm staying like this until the day I get married? You know, that made me cry. Like how beautiful is that? How beautiful a request is that? Or a priest saying, Father, will you pray for me before I hear confessions? I've never done this before. Or a kid saying, before I heard a confession, Father, will you just pray for me not to be nervous so I can say what I came here to say? And then I heard from children who have all kinds of pains in their carrying. From a, a young person who says, I don't know that I want to be alive next year. And I said, you're so young, you haven't even touched life yet. How can you say that? To someone else who said, I've got a serious thing that I'm dealing with, and I don't feel like I have anyone I can talk to. My parents don't even want to talk about this with me. And I said, all right, we have time. We'll sit and we'll talk about the game plan when you go home. These are the, the realities of our, of our teens and of our young adults and of our middle aged adults. So it was really a beautiful experience all in all. And again, I thank our young people, our campers, our counselors, and, and all the ones that we didn't see today. And I thank you uh, for supporting me in this ministry. And I also thank you for many people who sent me emails and text messages, uh, especially on Thursday, that people who go to the camp, they know that's a confession day, and they know that's, especially for my second week, it's really hard to just get through that day sitting still. And, and people sending me messages saying, I'm praying for your day, Father, I'm thinking of you, that was, that was awesome. That's what the community is all about. So thank you, and God bless you, and I hope that more of you will send your kids. Many of you can go as counselors. You see, you don't, you don't have to be you know, a college student to go as a counselor. Plenty of people can do that. Anyway, God bless you and thank you for supporting this beautiful day.